President Biden marking one year since the pandemic was declared on also taking credit for what President Trump accomplished with Operation Warp Speed. I want to bring in Republican Senator Tim Scott out of South Carolina. Senator, good to see you. we got a lot to talk about. So, good morning. So morning, thank sir. you for yes, being sir, here. Bill. Here's the line that stuck out to me last night. He said, we were hit with a virus that was met with silence and spread unchecked. Denials for days, weeks, then months. He wasn't talking about Wuhan wasn't talking about Beijing. He was talking about the Trump White House and Operation Warp Speed. What'd you think of that, Senator? Unbelievable to be, to be honest with you. Let's, let's, let's take a look back at 2020. It was NBC News that said they had to fact check President Trump, who said we would have a vaccine within a year. They said that would take a miracle. But what did President Trump produce? A miracle. Operation Warp Speed not only produced the vaccine, but because of President Trump's genius, we saw three companies that we saw potential in. So we bought 100 million doses at the beginning of this cycle. That means that when President Biden came into office, we were already averaging more than a million doses a day. By January 25th, it was 1.2 million. So in his first 100 days, he would have done 120 million doses, not the 100. The goal itself was underwhelming and for there to be no ability to share credit on such a day when we were recognizing 520,000 Americans had lost their lives. Thank God for the genius of the Trump administration who delivered 300 million doses ready to be put in arms on day one. You know, Senator Scott, it's Martha McCallum. Good to see you this morning, sir. Um, Good morning, Martha. It, you just touched on something that I think is really important here, and that is it wouldn't be that hard to acknowledge the successes of, of, of all these people who are involved, right? Regardless of your feelings about, you know, President Trump's personality or whatever it is, right? Joe Biden ran on a platform of bringing people together, of healing, right? We heard so yes. much about healing, and I can't help but think what the reaction would be across America if he stepped in front of that podium last night and said, you know what, let's give credit where credit is due. There were so many Americans involved in this great effort. Why do you think it is that he is so, so, that there's such anathema to go there? Why? The, the vitriol of the public forum l leaves no room for civility. And President Biden, who ran on this kumbaya, let's bring America together, his policy positions have created chasms between the left and the right, between the rich and the poor, between the black and the white. Literally, we've seen nothing that leads to this coalition of Americans working together under his administration. We've seen the exact opposite. A tribal America is not a, an America together. We have to focus our attention on what's best for the nation as a whole. Warp speed is a classic example. Uh, number two, the fact that we passed five relief bills in 2020 with 90 plus senators voting together mm -hmm. saying yes. This COVID relief package, zero Republican senators saying yes because 1%, 1% of all the money goes to vaccines, which reinforces the point, by the way, Martha, that the Trump administration did a great job putting the vaccines, 300 million of them, in a place where we could put them in arms. The, 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 the bill itself focuses less than 10% of its resources on COVID relief. Yeah. It's frustrating to see mm. the American family bearing the burden of $22,000 per family of four for a relief package that has more to do with a payment plan for progressives than it does COVID well, relief well, for Americans. Well, now he's going to go out and sell it. The devil could be in the details on this. There's a provision in that, in that bill, and I, I don't know how you feel about this, but uh, if, if you're a farmer, you can get a government loan up to 120 percent, but only if you're a minority farmer. Yes. Why would that fly? Terrible policy. It, it shouldn't fly at all. I mean, the, it's too heavy to fly. Look, think about this. As an African-American who's felt the burden of racism, the last thing that I would ever want to do is discriminate against other people. So when you have a farm program that is designed specifically for the exclusion of white farmers who are struggling as well, 
That is un-American. It, it is exactly what we fought against in the 60s and the 70s and beyond was this theory that we should judge people based on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. What we're seeing in this farm component of the COVID relief is antithetical to the progress that we hope for and that we've seen in America. This is a step back, not a step forward. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it is frustrating for the farmers who pay their bills. Now you're saying there's a bill that will give me 120% of my debt as long as I'm not white. Well, so some are to black it's, farmers it's who the pay their bills, yeah. it's the same thing. The beginning of reparations, I think. Martha, go ahead. So, Senator Scott, you said the other day when you were on with, with Trey Gowdy, woke supremacy is as bad as white supremacy. And you said we need to take this seriously. And it was a response to something that Joy Reid had said about you, um, that you were representing the patina of diversity, uh, she said, in a very sort of snide way on her program. Um, and here's what, what Don Lemon, who went after you big time on this, on CNN. I want you to watch this, and I want to give you a chance to, to respond to what he says here. Watch this. Guess who police officers were beaten by? Guess who wanted to hang the vice president? White supremacist, Tim Scott! What are you doing? The only... That's just part of it. Uh, the harangue went on for some time, mm. Senator Scott. Oh. Uh, what do you say about that? What do you say to him? Well... I would say that white supremacy and woke supremacy have their roots in racism and discrimination. It is bad. Uh, I am not talking about tomorrow or yesterday. I'm talking about today. If we don't deal with it today, we are going to have something on our hands that we can't deal with. It was the woke supremacists, by the way, who said that me and Herschel Walker were the coon squad. Mm. If, you, if you watch the, uh, the folks who are yelling the loudest right now, it includes people who are at their wits end because there are African Americans who are willing to speak their minds from a conservative perspective. Why that requires people to call my office and threaten my life, why that requires me to have a security detail because I decide to stand up for my values, my convictions based on my faith, I don't understand that. So Don Lemon can say whatever Don Lemon wants to say, but until he has taken a serious look at what's happening on his side of the aisle and come out strong against that, we're going to continue to have a conversation in America that keeps us divided and not building a bridge so that we can live in this nation together. Senator, thank you for your time. Hope you come back soon, okay? Absolutely, Bill. Thank you, Tim Senator. Scott. Good to see you Thank today. You, South Carolina.